Our first big thing, number one, I express it as apocalypse now. And the whole idea about this big thing is that since the dawn of time, things moved quite slowly. If you were born 500, 600 years ago, you probably wouldn't notice any change during your lifetime, probably living very similar to your parents. Now, that has accelerated and accelerated and accelerated as we've had the scientific revolution. We've had the uh, industrial revolution. And we know that in the 20th century, especially towards the end of the 20th century, we were seeing significant change happen in not just decades, but in years. Next year is going to be the point where we realise waves of change really are happening on a monthly basis. And if you're working with a lot of AI, you already know this. You know that the things that we could do last month are different from the things that we can do this month. And as AI moves more into the mainstream and more people get up to speed with that, they realise that their skill sets on a monthly basis are going to change. And that's what we mean by apocalypse now because it is going to feel like a series of tiny mini apocalypses all the way along. The character of life is going to move into the age of the information apocalypse. So that's number one. Number two. Number two, Mary Rose. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was, number two, I was actually listening. <laughs> <laughs> number two is big gaps. Yeah, so we know that modern life is already characterised by a growing inequality between the haves and the have-nots. And lots have been written about how potentially AI could democratise things. Unfortunately, if you look into the detail and you look at the underlying trends and you look at the cause of inequality, it doesn't really look like that's going to be the case. Why is that? Well, it's because inequality in income and wealth is actually created by an inequality in access to education, skills, knowledge and culture. Those things that are necessary to, flow, to flourish in the economy. Now, digital intelligence, AI, just adds another layer to those things that you need to be able to access to participate. There's also going to be a broadening in terms of people's job roles that are using AI and those that aren't. So underlying all of that, given that the access to those things with AI and AI creates this new thing on top, we only see the inequality in society, those gaps getting bigger. Now, obviously, at some point, we all hope that the governments of the world will realise this and do something about it. But we can't see that being in 2025. So we're seeing 2025, unfortunately, as continuing that trend when we really realise that AI is going to deliver bigger gaps. Moving on to number three, it's the Bitcoin comparison. So why would we compare Bitcoin to AI or AI to Bitcoin? Um, really, really very simple. And it's a very small part of what we mean by that. So if we think of Bitcoin in the year 20, uh, 2009, almost no value. You could have mined it. You could have sold it. No one was going to give you much for a Bitcoin. Next year, however, that Bitcoin, had you saved it, is probably going to exceed a dollar value of a hundred thousand. So a hundred thousand dollars for something that, you know, previously, less than three decades ago, had absolutely no value at all. Now, about 10 years after Bitcoin coming, most of us woke up and went, oh, um, Bitcoin isn't, whilst we might not agree with other crypto stuff, Bitcoin probably isn't going anywhere. It seems to be a store of value. Institutions are starting to move in and buy it. This is a thing. Oh, I wish I jumped on the bus earlier. Look at the money I could have made. Um, but most of us realise that too late. Our bet is that in 2025, AI is going to have that same moment that it's going to feel like suddenly everyone starts to realise that AI really is a thing. Yes, there's been hype about it, but the value it creates isn't going away. But there'll be that moment of realisation is, have I let it run away from me? Is there still time to jump on? And I think collectively, lots of societies will be having that Bitcoin moment. So there we go. Wow. Um, I've been looking forward to tell you these three things for, you know, a good couple of weeks. I hope they really help you set some ideas about what's coming next year and what you might like to do in your own lives and your own businesses. Yeah. With this knowledge ahead of time.